every photo I've ever seen of Chris, he looks like he's, I can't tell if he's trying to kill someone with his mind or if he's disappointed that he wasn't able to kill someone with his mind. A little from column A, you know, some from column B. He tried to kill me with meat. Hey, you Didn't came work. voluntarily. You signed, you signed the waiver. You're listening to the worst thing ever. So how are you gentlemen doing? Radical. Radical! It's, uh, wow, wow, wow. past couple weeks have been a series of adventures. And I've, yeah. Did you get more cupcakes and pie? Not, not as such. Um, although as, as I recently motioned, uh, mentioned on social media, like I went to this restaurant because I was in a, a place I, I generally don't go out of town and uh, the kids like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm like, okay, let's go to that place across the street. We go to this, uh, this Mexican joint and, uh, it was good and everything. And the waiter's really friendly. And I'm like, Hey man, if we're down here again, you know, what else is good to eat around here? Cause I know you're fucking, you know, sick of eating here. I'm sure he's like, Oh, there is a place. He's like, now let me propose this. I'm, I'm from New York. And I like pizza, and I know pizza. And there's a fucking place called Pie in the Sky down here where the slices are as big as your head. And he pulls out his iPhone, and legit, his head could hide behind the slice. I'm like, go on. I'm intrigued. He's like, they have a pizza, a meat lover's pizza. And if you can eat this whole pizza, they will give you $500. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I'm like, I, okay, I am making a note. <laughs> I will be there soon. You could feed all the creatures in the field with that. Oh my god, yeah. It, it, it'd be glorious. Just blotting out the sun and cheesy goodness. And the, the arteries. So see, now this, this encourages me, because now that I know precisely which rocky crag on the downward slope you're hanging off of right now, I, I need to refer you to someone, because driving through the country recently to, uh, to drop a friend off, it's, it's like 2 in the morning, I'm super tired, and I see a billboard on the highway horribly designed is bright yellow but it caught my eye because it said the law offices of pizza <laughs> and i'm like what and if you look like there's smaller text above it's like been in an accident or blah 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 call the law offices of pizza and i just want the pizza office to survive i want yeah. them to expand yeah i would choose that over over anyone with a more like sophisticated ad campaign yeah and that, and I just want an excuse to meet, you know, like Todd Pizza or whoever the fuck this guy is. Pizza, 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 and sons. I want somebody to freak out on the judge and have them be like, are you finished, Mr. Pizza? <laughs> <laughs> if you win your case, you get a free large two-topping pizza. <laughs> I'll, I'll thank you to contain your excitement in my courtroom, Mr. Pizza. Yeah, exactly. Prosecutor Pizza is the best. <laughs> the pizza rests. You better be going somewhere with this pizza. <laughs> <laughs> now, see now i wish it was just like a, a, a detective instead yeah, yeah, like a cop show. <laughs> god damn it pizza you're a loose cannon <laughs> one of these days pizza you're gonna learn procedure i'm too old for this shit pizza <laughs> i want your pepperoni and your gun <laughs> pizza have you been hitting the sauce again <laughs> <laughs> oh man you look like you got a bit of a stuffed crust this morning Oh jeez, yeah, but no. yeah, it does not does not go well. I'm doing contract shit for uh, you know, not quite scum of the earth, but pretty damn close. So uh, I meant to, I was going to do this last week, and and we got way late, but I I wanted to chat, and I think Chris will appreciate this. Uh, security training. Oh, I have notes <laughs> on all the. It's getting weirder and dumber, and oh, I man. and I love it so much. Do you do you have to use J Pass? Uh, I do not, but uh, okay. it's something that we guys. Do. If you see something, say something. It's that easy. Oh well, man, it yeah. I mean that that level, that surface level, like at, you know, all employees must take you know, and it's redundant and stupid, and mostly, I mean, it's mostly like situational awareness stuff. You know, that's is there really any benefit to going beyond uh, Sony protocol? I mean, that's entirely secure, isn't it? <laughs> It's absolutely the best tech you can get. God, those poor bastards. I never thought I'd feel That's, bad for Sony. That shit is still blowing up. Like, oh, God. Oh, yeah, because it just, it just got put on the WikiLeaks earlier this week. Well, people have had enough time to mine the nuggets out of it now. 
Oh, like that Spider-Man email? Yeah, oh, that was the worst! Oh, I mean, I feel bad for the innocents that, like, have personal data that's getting caught in the crossfire, but, like, on the exec level, I, oh, God, so sad. It's so weird that you get to, like, peek in and go, yeah, that's what's wrong with Hollywood. <laughs> Yeah, no, we have we have a slate of of trainings that we have to do every year for DOD stuff. And and, yeah. and some of them are they're just god awful, but they're also great. One of my I have like a couple favorites that I, I really want to talk about. Uh the first is the the annual sexual harassment training. Um this is given to you by a pair of genderless CGI robots with uh synthesized voices. Are you Hot. shitting me? No, I'm not. See, we had the sexist sex, uh, sexual harassment training, but it was at least like a, a, a tableau presented by people that were acting. No, in the 90s. Yeah, it's bad. We have those too, but, but my absolute favorite is the anti-terrorism training that everybody's required to take, even though it will not apply to 90% of the employees. It is, uh, it follows, you know, it's a day in the life of this guy who's going out of town for a business trip, and it, he's literally just having the worst day of his life. So it starts out, he, he's getting on his plane to go to the remote site, and that plane gets hijacked. Is he going to meet Dick Cheney at the remote site? Oh, if only. Uh, so that plane gets hijacked, and... The, the lesson that they're trying to teach you here is not to self-identify as a government employee because it could get you killed in a situation like this. Um, oh, so like they wouldn't hijack the plane if there wasn't a government employee on it? Yeah, well, it's more like it's more like he was at the wrong place the wrong time. Literally, these guys were going to hijack this plane anyway, and he just happened to be on it. I just think we've come to a weird crosswords where when you said self-identify, like I can't picture that in a non-gender fluid context. <laughs> like, well, I mean, I'm like 80 percent DOD compliant, you, but I like a little cock on the side. Are, are you comfortable in your government employee skin? I am. <laughs> Not for long, though. I mean, uh, you are an alien, right? I mean, because the government's been taken over by aliens. Have you been studying the yes bomb? No, I'm a lizard person. Oh man. Oh, so you have an alliance with the aliens then? <laughs> Damn it! I knew because it. they bring him golden gems. By Vectron's <laughs> kindly claw. <laughs> yeah. For Vectron. <laughs> so I'm not like that's not that's like that's that's act one of this training. Um, so the plane lands uh, miraculously at the airport that it was going to land at originally. And the the hijacking situation is resolved safely. Uh, and this is where it gets weird. <laughs> uh, dude calls into his boss's office and, you know, tells him what's happened. Boss is like, man. Wow, that sucks. I'm I'm glad you're okay. You still better go to that meeting, though. <laughs> <laughs> because the real enemy here is lack of productivity. Exactly. Exactly. So he goes to his hotel, and um, his hotel. He's he's at his hotel room, and in the middle of the night, um, his hotel room gets broken into, and he gets taken hostage. Is this guy's last name Nixon? <laughs> <laughs> he is not uh, given a name. <laughs> uh so code word deep throat he's, he's taken hostage uh the hostage situation is resolved he calls into his boss again boss says wow you're just having a bad day uh good luck at the meeting tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> this okay you the you've created a new thing now no matter what anyone tells me like oh god my wife died like this dog it'd be like geez man that's rough at any rate, uh, see you at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the next day, he's going to get into his car to uh, drive to the site where the meeting is being held. It's, it's being held on a military base. Uh, and then he sees something suspicious near his car. Um, it turns out somebody planted a bomb near his car, so he has to call the bomb squad. So wait, he calls the bomb squad, well, the bomb, or he calls the, bomb the police. Squad, well, so so throughout this whole thing, you know, well, he was having a meeting with the bomb squad, so he had him on speed dial. The uh, throughout this whole thing, they're presenting scenarios to you, and you're sort of choosing what's the best practice. Mm -hmm. then that's how that's how you're learning essentially. So what ends up happening is the bomb squad shows up. They they deal with the bomb. 
then you get in your then this dude gets in his car and drives to the military base for to have the meeting and while he's on the military base for the meeting there's a terrorist attack somewhere in the country and the base goes on lockdown so wait shouldn't he identify to make sure that that's actually the bomb squad and not a bunch of terrorists in bomb squad uniforms well i mean he should have but he didn't this is like a DOD rewrite of the movie Clerks. Just, I'm not even supposed to be here <laughs> Well, except today. here's the thing. Everybody reminds him, yeah, you're supposed to be here today, dude. Good night and good luck at the meeting. Exactly. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Be- like, the dude is literally, like, he's going to have to go in for trauma, like, stuff after this day. I guess I understand. Like, it seems unlikely that they would give you, like, if everything, because the way, I love how every part of this, you were like, so that gets resolved. Like, you didn't explain, like, how. You were just like, well, so that that ended up fine. And so at that point, yeah, like, yeah, go to the fucking meeting. What are you, a pussy? It involves jetpacks and fucking gym equipment. Well, they, don't, <laughs> they don't really explain it away either, other than to say, so, so for the hijacking, um, they negotiate. Uh, the release of some of the hostages, and then the anti, you know, the the FBI, whatever anti, the counter counter strike squad goes in and arrests these guys before they can can get away because they somehow managed to get the get the airplane to land at the airport it was supposed to anyway instead of diverting it. It's just there. It's a combination of bad luck and dumb criminals essentially. And, like, the, the hostage situation in the hotel room is resolved when, like, a passing maid heard the commotion and called the police. And, the you know, this is where they teach you how to identify to the police, like, what's going on in, like, some sort of, in sort of, like, vague code language. So this is, like, Alexander in the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad hypothetical situation. Yeah. And, and through it all, you're supposed to be, like, seriously... If if they had broken it up into different scenarios, it would have been less crazy than this is just one dude having a very bad day. Oh man, I'm glad that you uh, that you had that to share because it will make what I'm about to share believable. Because <laughs> I swear to God, I did not make this up. So, I okay, I'm the deputy facility security officer. I know a little bit about security. I'm also the sysop. I know a little bit about technology. But because I have access to this this government database, they're like, okay, you need to do your, you know, your annual stupid training. I'm like, okay. So they send me two training things. One of them perfectly reasonable. It's it's like a animated, interactive PowerPoint about like proper document labeling and the laws that apply to different kinds of personal information. Oh, I've taken that one. Yeah. So you know, it's boring and it's wordy, but it's it's totally valid. Okay. I can't I can't fault them for that. But then there's the other one. <laughs> now, the other one, you, you start it, and the site that you launch this from looks like a perfectly reasonable, serious government site. And then you hit the training button, it pops up a window. It is basically a shitty Flash, like, Facebook game. And much like uh, the one uh, Chris was talking about where it's a day in the life of the, you know, world's most unluckiest is traveler. This, is this the, um, the DoD Information Awareness Cyber Challenge? Yes! I, oh god, I, yes, you know exactly what I I'm talking about. I took it last month. It's so fucking awesome. So you do this, and it starts out, and it's like, uh, today's your first day at, you know, Acme Co., or, you know, whatever generic company name it is, and it presents you, and it's a first-person view of, like, you know, your working environment. It's like, here's your cubicle and your workstation, and it's giving you, you know, kind of mundane information, and then it goes completely off the rails, because it's like, Uh, You hear a voice like, hi, and the camera pans up and to the left. And there's this like badly CG'd Asian woman with the the death rictus grin that everyone had when the Joker put chemicals in the shampoo in the first Batman movie. It's literally like like my first CG. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so awful. And it's like, hi, some of us at the office use my tunes to share music at work. It just gets so boring. Do you want to use my tunes to listen to music? And when this happens, the whole screen goes like dark blue and like a bright yellow warning rectangle. Does that mean it's like, 
Angela wants you to use my tunes to listen to music. What do you do? And I'm like, uh, uh, n- no, I guess. No. Good answer. Yeah, and, and during this training, you periodically check in with the, the, the information assurance guy in a sweater vest. The vaguely ethnic information assurance in, guy. In a sweater vest who tells you, good job. You managed to thwart many cyber attacks from china and other countries who do not like us and they show like the shadowy figure hunched over a fucking razor keyboard every couple of minutes like you've defeated him and it goes through this guy's like whole fucking day and half of this is completely stupid common sense he doesn't do any work yeah he doesn't do anything and then all of a sudden it's like it's time for lunch so it first person views to a cafe across the street and at one point you're just sitting there and the blue screen comes back it's like whoa that guy is stealing your phone. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And you look up and there's this guy. He comes by, picks the phone up off your table and he's holding it like by the tips of his fingers perfectly horizontally and begins to walk slowly away towards the door. But as he's walking, his head turns back to look at you and it turns back further than a human should. And it's just really weird and creepy. And then it's like, that guy is stealing your phone. What do you do? And the first answer isn't, punch that motherfucker because he's still in arm's reach because he's just casually walking across the cafe yeah like he's got the same land speed as your garden variety jim henson muppet you know (laughs) Uh, it's just fucking terrible but my favorite uh my favorite thing and the whole thing like that that was funny the other stuff's funny is it has like sort of weird trick questions so there's one that goes what kind of information would cause serious harm to the national security and it's got like you know confidential secret top secret you know a couple of different options i said well top secret he goes no top secret information leaking would cause grave harm to the (laughs) to the country not serious harm i'm like what (laughs) triaging harm to the country (laughs) that it is so on a scale of one to ten how harmed are you i mean it's it's more like the 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 way that classification levels are defined is how much damage they could do um so like literally the definition of secret is may cause harm to national security whereas top secret is defined as may cause grave harm to the national security because they can't get specific with examples obviously so that's like that's related to you know classification training which you also have to take yeah, no, the whole thing was hilarious, but I, I mean, I was butthurt that I had to take it anyway, but I was, you know, surprisingly bemused. Yeah, no, so the, the whole thing is gamified, so you are, you are, each module has a trophy associated with it that yet, yet you earn if you get a perfect score in the module. I got all those trophies, damn yeah, it. I did not because I don't really care enough. My security gamer score is so big right now. Did did you print out the little certificate it gives you at the end and hang it up? Well, we have to. Uh, <laughs> well, I saved it as a PDF, so I can print as many as I want. Just wallpaper that shit. <laughs> yeah. With it. When our inspection happens, we're like, yeah, yeah, look at them. No, you you need to blow it up with your rast your uh, rasturbator. <laughs> eight by eight grid behind your cube. This room is secure. That would be amazing. I should so do that. The, yeah. Um... So the the alternative to that training is uh, another uh, training where it's the same kind of CG, but you're basically looking at a cutaway view of a of an office building, where there's each floor has different rooms and such, like like it's a dollhouse essentially, and you have to go it's the security version of FTL. Yeah, you have to go to each room and identify like what's fucked up about that room. <laughs> Is there a point where you have to like compare two images and tell what's different between them? No, security it's, wise. it's more like, oh, that person, you know, left their, you know, security card at their desk. They shouldn't have done that. Or this person, you know, is has left out confidential information where anybody could see it. This person brought their phone into the bathroom with them to take a dump. Yeah, they did a um they did a, a gamification makeover on the compliance training that we had to do too. We always have like there's like sexual harassment, code of conduct, and uh, I, I forget like uh, in Terms of I, service. IP <laughs> like business, you know, in, insider trading kind of ethics. stuff. Ethics. No, it's it's more business specific than just ethics. Ethics is rolled mainly into the code of conduct, but uh, 
this is specifically like you know confidential proprietary information and uh, and you know uh, insider trading type law. And like you know, for years and years, this thing like the system we used was shitty. It looked like it was from the '90s. It had like elevator music, and you know, it was like it was like a film those old film strips. That's like there's a narrator that's reading for a while with a, a static image on the screen, and it would be like ding. And then, you know, you, you that was your prompt to click to the next slide. And then periodically it would quiz you. And they were dumb, but they were at least like, you know, fairly on point for what they're trying to educate. And and they could have been easily grouped as as a, a subtitle of like compliance training. Don't be an asshole. And then they went like the the last one I did, they um they went to a very like gamification style, like, you know, they much more interactive, much more flashy and all that shit. But all of the things had gone away from like, you know, like the code of conduct one, like didn't just create ridiculous scenarios about sexual harassment or whatever. It was like, you know, teaching why you shouldn't be an asshole to people like, you know, treat other people with respect. They deserve it, whatever. Um, and like, you know, don't uh, give, you know, information to your buddy about stock price because, you know, that's kind of defrauding the rest of the market. And that's not cool. You're an asshole. And the newer gamified one, the subtitle might as well have been don't get us sued. Because yeah. <laughs> every single message had been completely tweaked away from like, you know, don't sexually harass women because they're human beings and deserve, you know, respect and, and uh, you know, everything. It was more like, we could totally get sued for a lot of money if you do this. So, you know, try to keep it on the down low, right, gents? And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Should you do this? Yes or no? You know, it was like, you, it's totally robbed the soul of like, don't, you know, I mean, hokey as it, as it tried to do it, at least the message was there of like, don't be an asshole. Instead of now, this was, it was purely like, it costs us this much when we get sued for this. Don't get us sued for this. Here's how you can walk the the incredibly thin line of doing this anyway and not getting sued for it. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, it's a step up from what we have. I mean, our company is so small. We have so few people that we basically just have like the government approved billboard things like up in a break room and that's like our training for that sort of things but i mean for years our um sexual harassment training amounted to guys we have like one woman here just leave becky alone <laughs> <laughs> what is your company's position on loose lips so we had uh the first year down here we had this network training that was you know don't don't plug shit into your computer don't do any of this uh or else hackers might get to you and it would always cut away to this one you know cgi uh hacker so like all all the good people were were actual people all the bad people were tigers <laughs> because you know we don't want to associate negativity with a particular race or gender right 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 so when they cut away to the the quote-unquote hacker tiger he's wearing a balaclava <laughs> like <laughs> Are you sure you like were sitting there in front of a Are you keyboard? sure you weren't getting indoctrinated or super high? There may have been there may have been like uh, some uh Serenity-esque uh happy goody bar <laughs> type shit going on. <laughs> there's this, this the fucking tiger with the, the thing over his head and he's sitting there you know like quote unquote tapping on a keyboard, you know, but he's just there like <laughs> It's like oh my god. Strong bad's like, how does he do that? <laughs> yeah, Chris, that's making me want uh, your your like, you know, terrible day story. But it's all like the main character is is the r tricks rabbit, and all the hijackers are kids. Interesting. <laughs> how is that not a commercial in the eighties? That's what I learned. <laughs> well, because terrorism was vague, but I mean, hijacking was huge the, the, in the eighties. The tricks rabbit on Pan Am five hundred one or whatever. <laughs> I hate to steer things away, but can we all just take a moment and recognize what assholes kids are? Because you remember, like, not once, but multiple times back in the 80s, they did a thing as, like, vote, should the tricks rabbit get tricks? And every time, kids were like, fuck him, no! Yeah, well, they'd been, they they had drunk in the Kool-Aid that, that tricks were only for kids. That was effic efficacy testing. Yeah, exactly. What they didn't... What they didn't, you know, what those commercials didn't show you is that the the Trix Rabbit was debilitatingly addicted to them and the kids were actually trying to help him <laughs> stay off the smack. They tried to get him to Trix Methadone, but he just wouldn't. <laughs> okay, see, so I thought, you know, feed the rabbit. He's so slender, like he's starving, but your spin on that is no, he just had meth weight. No, so I mean, I think, I think Toucan Sam had a problem and Fred Flintstone clearly had a problem. Or no, Barney Flintstone. 
Toucan Sam had a cocaine problem. Well, it didn't start that way. I mean, Toucan isn't his giving name. That Toucan bit refers to forties of Schlitz. <laughs> I just, I'm not, I'm not sure that that Trix was actually like totally strung out. You know, like where they were protecting him from himself. I think they were just assholes. Well, maybe, maybe he's been getting better, and this is like the last stages of that, where he's, he's, he says, no, I'm good, man. I can take it. I can handle the tricks now, man. But they weren't like, you know, think of your recovery. They were like, no, this shit is ours, bitch. Well, no, because he's, he's given, he's been, he's fooled them once more than twice. So they're <laughs> done. They're done with his shit, basically. They the tricks rabbit like got them enough times they they woke up you know in in like cabo with like no money in their pocket goddamn tricks rabbit motherfucking tricks rabbit god damn it so chris's theory is like you know if kids had been there to inter intervene like the coco bird would not have been cuckoo <laughs> for coco puffs he would have had a reasonable relationship with coco puffs now that i think about it like 80s <laughs> cereal had a lot of addiction like messages in it <laughs> yeah no, it was all. It was all either uh, being wholly addicted to the substance, or being wholly dedicated to like memoruing the substance and just protecting it at all costs. <laughs> I'm. I'm also. I'm with Dan. Like the. Uh, I, I think it may have been just a test that that those polls were a test. Like you know, a church having like a survey going out. Like, do you believe in God? Like, just you know, how are we doing? How would you rate your your faith? Uh, I like to imagine that after every one of those came back, all the uh, company executives had a you know, big smash party. Yes, 98% of kids don't want to give that fucking rabbit tricks. There's like champagne and caviar. Metrics. I don't know. Just all of the oddity and like 80s marketing and the like makes me think that. I mean, you know how like all the time now you read really things like, oh, it turns out in the 50s. The government just gassed an entire town with an experimental chemical just for jollies to see what would happen. Like, I feel like there was the invisible hand of Uncle Sam, like, doing some social experiments with 80s marketing There's nothing in the Constitution that says they can't do that. No, those powers are uh, reserved for the states. Like, I, you know, I always tell people, I, I was fortunate to have, you know, a mother that read to me and had good musical taste. And, you know, so I got exposed to a lot of stuff. But I always tell people, like, I was raised by PBS, by, like, quality educational and instructional programming forged me as, as far as I'm concerned. And today, you know, I think YouTube is a new place for that. Anytime my daughter wants to know something or learn something, like, she doesn't ask me. She doesn't go to a book she doesn't get it she just goes to youtube she finds exactly how to do it and she does it and she informs me of more interesting news and factoids and trivia and like better ways of doing things just from using that as sort of a, a data point for for stuff so just in the same way that i always thought people were like oh we heavily monitor tv time they can only have like a little bit of tv time like i always thought those people and were their kids stupid. are boring and i think the screen time people are equally stupid with the tablets and the internet yeah my uh mike Rahulik did a, a whole thing um did a post about how he went to his daughter's or son's or whatever kid's school and had a conversation about video games and like you know they were like do you set you know, how much screen time do you set? He goes, well, it depends on, on what the person, on what my kid's doing. If they're in Minecraft and they're building something and they're learning, you know, like how to make an 8-bit computer with redstone and shit, I let them go at it because they're they're learning something. If they're, you know, playing a, a mindless video game, maybe half an hour. You know, you can't set a, a screen time for, well, TV, 30 minutes, you know, no matter what it is. Yeah, the content matters more than the medium. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm a firm believer in knowledge is power, superior tech, and I that's how I raised my kid. She has had unfiltered internet access since she was old enough to start clicking. She has her own computer, she has her own tablet, she has her own phone. There are no restrictions on this. She can find out anything and well fuck, we have the echo now. She can ask questions to the ether and get answers and i'm proud of this yeah fact. i think i think there are a lot of people who have an inflated sense of um you know the value that comes from unplugging and doing nothing i'm like i, I ray i'm kind of with you like the if you're creating something um and you know yeah you're in a dark room staring at a screen i'll take that over somebody who's like um you know i i had to walk to the mountain to clear my head like 
cleared of what? What are you doing? What what value are you creating for anybody? You know, in aside, I don't know. It, it just bothers me that people look down on um, creation of stuff. You know, spending time doing that when it's like, well, what are you really doing with your, you know, your your haughty toity uh, hike up into the mountains and whatever? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I I grew up in the woods, you know, and I've had an affinity for tech and machines, so I get that there are different paths. I mean, for example, I've embraced tech as, you know, the archivist. I'm, I'm largely a consumer of media, and you're largely a creator, and we've got our own unique uh, skill sets out of that, which I think both are valuable, but, you know – that's that's our thing but at the same time you know like i spent a lot of time just walking in the woods when i was a kid and i think there's a, a monicum of peace like i i mean you laugh but i enjoyed going to the callaway garden for all of the uh you know the rain and everything it's it's beautiful it's cool that they've cultivated the land and you know it's kind of peaceful but i think like modern day adults that are trying to force an appreciation for things that don't have any greater inherent value than any other thing are at, at best wasting their time yeah. and it works. And that's, that's exactly probably what I'm fostering. Saying. I'm not against, you know, I, I, I go for walks at, you know, one thirty or two in the morning around here because it's peaceful and it's nice and quiet. And I, I enjoy the crisp air and stuff like that. So I'm not opposed to going outside. And all, what I'm opposed to is people assuming that in any given scenario, being outside at a baseball field, eating a hot dog is better than being in a room doing something on a computer. Like, fuck you. You can't make that assumption. Okay, well, I want to quantify because having a hot dog improves like, every experience. I don't know about the ball field, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm with the people saying hot dog. Guys, guys, I want hot dogs now. But, I, I, yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, consuming someone else running around a baseball field and eating something probably unhealthy, but you're outside, you're getting fresh air. Like, that is somehow viewed as a a superlative yeah. uh thing to be spending your time on then drinking a glass of water and and you know as you said editing a, a video for fucking youtube and it's like oh but you know what where's their sense of connection with people it's like oh they're connecting with a whole bunch of people that leave comments and are you know engaged like and they're not i don't i never yeah. understood like the mindset of people who are like uh my kid needs to befriend like like people whose all all their life friends are the people that lived on the street they grew up on. It's like so you you basically built your entire social circle out of people who happen right. to live on the same fucking street at a certain time of your life. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, case in point. Uh, yeah, most. I mean, like I say, I grew up in the woods. So once BBSs were a thing, that was my social viability. And even now, like, I mean, I have a full time job. I go to work. You know, I I have to go and do things with the kid. You know, Girl Scouts and homeschool and and you know, pottery class. So I encounter a lot of people that I interact with on a day to day basis. But I think the quality of social interaction I have online is far greater than any of that. And she us utilizes the tools to deal with people she knows and doesn't know. I mean, so she's getting a greater benefit of it at her age than we ever did. But that's, I get, Ray, that's kind of what I'm saying is like, I get the idea that in-person interactions uh, have more weight and, and value than remote ones. Like I'll, I'll grant you if I, you know, us having this conversation here versus you and I being together in the same room, I'll take the you and I in the same room. It's better. No question. But yeah, there's a different vibe. It, well, it's the same argument of watching something on TV versus the social experience yeah. of in a theater. Neither one's invalid. That's just two different vibes. But my problem is I can grant that premise. The, the leap I can't make is that then being in person with a bunch of idiots is better than being a, remotely connected to a bunch of really cool people. I don't get it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I get I get that in-person interaction is important, but not as important as who you're interacting with. The end. Yeah, I run into that problem all the time up here. There's there's yeah. nobody in my general vicinity who I've, who I've met who I really would ever want to hang out with outside of required interactions. So, yeah, I think in this digital digital world, um, it's I don't think proximity and and you know, physical interaction is nearly as important as it once was. 
I should also say, because overall, this uh, this conversation got really serious and insightful, uh, which is not really our bag. So I want to take this opportunity uh, to reiterate again that I could be deep, deep in the most wild, like, wet monkey cunt wrecker, you know, activities so with deep. my wife. <laughs> and it's it might be A. <laughs> but if I had a hot dog, it might be A+. plus. <laughs> Hot dog dynamics. I still want a fucking hot dog. Every situation can be approved. That's all I'm saying. If we both had a hot dog, I don't even know what's <laughs> over A++. Do those stack? Well, at that point, you're getting into sort of astral projection of grades. Oh, God, just mustard dripping. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> no. We, ugh, we talked about this last time. I like this hot dog theorem that you're working on. Like, <laughs> See, there. <laughs> if any, any scenario is enhanced by the presence of a hot dog. Even if you're not eating it, or if it's just there? That's a great question, because there is a yeah, weird sort much. of odor uh, created by, not like hot dogs you make at home, but like, you know, baseball or cart-style hot dogs. Like, no, I, I, I am willing to go on book and say that at eating or not, even if the hot dog itself was not edible, let's say it is a complete, let's say it's a hot dog made entirely out of... Um, What's that tough shit they put on the outside of cakes fondant. to decorate them? Fond fondant. Fondant, yeah. A fondant oh. hot dog. Oh. Its mere presence oh. would enhance the situation. Like, if I'm getting chewed out by my boss, so it's you bad. Just, you just want a tube of something nearby. Well, I just feel like if there was a hot dog sitting right in the middle of his desk, unbidden and unaccounted for, like, it would lighten the mood. So, so it's, not, it's not the aroma of the hot dog. It's just the concept of a hot dog. Concept is like level one. Level two would be like, ah, delicious hot dog. Level three would be like, oh, it's in my mouth. So good. So, so what you're saying is hospitals need to like pipe in the scent of hot dogs throughout the hallways. As opposed to the scent of like <laughs> death and sanitation. Iodine. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a win. How, how about a mix of, of death and hot dogs? Well, you might find some similarities between the two smells. <laughs> Yeah, there are there are there are notes in common. I mean, you know, and I'm not like Captain Hot Dog. I don't eat hot dogs on the reg, but when I do, I'm like, this is what I've been missing. So what would you what would you say is your is your hot dog hierarchy like? Because okay, I'll I'll go on rec. We talked about the, the easy cheese and shit. Yeah, I I eat the the hot dogs that have the easy cheese already inside them. No, I draw <laughs> the line on cheese infused wieners. But that is a bridge too far. It's delicious, but I, I acknowledge that it's it's pretty, it's pretty fucked up, but it's 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 a fucked up niche thing, but I love it. But I will, I will definitely just say that those are those are my home hot dogs. Those are not if I if I was out someplace, I would not expect to find those. I expect you wouldn't eat a roller dog. I, with I cheese expect in it. like Dodger Stadium to have a, a different echelon of hot dogs. Uh, and that I had one there and it was it was I don't know if it lived up to the hype, but it was it was quite tasty. I'm trying to fit like Meg loves the uh, the Costco food court hot dog. I'm just trying to figure out, like, I I kind of like hot dogs, but I've never found, like, the ones that people are just like, like you guys immediately were Pavlovian as soon as I mentioned where you're like, God, I want a fucking hot dog. Like, where, what, what hot dog have you had that makes you so hard for them? I think it's just that I haven't had a hot dog in a while. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I don't think it's, it's like there's a particular brand or style of hot dog that is the, you know, I feel like. If it's a hot dog moment, like sometimes you're like, oh, <laughs> this has been a shitty day. I got three hours to drive. I did get to la wait a minute. Does this gas station have a hot dog roller? Hot dog. Gross. Ugh. And it's better. No, it's got to be. It's got to be uh, a kosher dog uh, put on the grill. Boiled hot dogs at home are bullshit. For whatever reason, like roasted hot dogs. Or, like, hot dogs you get in an establishment. Almost always better. I'm pro-chili dog. Uh, I love a good corn dog. Yeah, I mean, I definitely... Um, the ones in the, in the, the like, silver cart um, never do a lot for me. I mean, the, the, I'm always afraid of the gas station ones. They smell amazing. I feel like they're more my style. Like, the roller is more my style than the steam cart. Yeah. But like, I just... have seen like a, a mini version of that hot dog roller thing that you could purchase for home use. And I seriously considered it for like a minute <laughs> because I was like, they're always so good when I get them off that. But again, I think it's you, the moment and not just, the conveyance. And I think you like things that are glistening. 
Oh, so much. So we've talked about frosted, but they're muffins. usually so dry and crusty. No, you you got to go to the good gas stations where they have the buns in the steamer drawer. Ah. Well, so yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is is a hot dog the little meat stick, or is it the meat stick and the bun? No, with bun the top, like the whole it's experience, the, not just the wiener. Yeah. So you can't just say hot dog. You know, on no, the but roller. we can say that you, you say, go to bad hot dog places, Chris, with your crunchy buns. Well, but I don't get a fucking hot dog at a gas station. Well, then this isn't about you. Then you truly <laughs> haven't lived. No, it's not. That's why I haven't said anything. Why are you getting all up in our hot dog love, Chris? Damn it. Because I just want one to love me. Why are you trying to chill our dogs, Chris? The gas station, I'm kind of, I'm with Chris. The gas station hot dogs makes me afraid that later I'm going to poop some sort of nylon cord that has like bacteria that has never been seen on earth before. See, that's how you stay healthy. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. You got you got to let you got to get that snout and anus juices into the joints. It has it has the distilled nutrients of everything that creature ever ate. And plants love it. It's like you have like a a a bacta tank of it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, the, the little Skywalker like breathing apparatus on you, and 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 the fucking medical robot, creepy ass looking medical robot. Oxygenated hot is, dog water. Is back to tank of hot dog water too niche for a title? Because that oh, it's pretty that great. is the most disturbing image I've <laughs> thought of all week. <laughs> oh yeah, back to tank of hot dog water. That's that's where I expect this podcast to be. Not insightful commentary about the changing landscape of media consumption. Hot dog. Not water. the forty-five minutes of you and Patrick going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I'll just cut that entirely. Have you guys ever had the the uh, Costco hot dog? Yeah, yeah, I, I had. Uh, so we didn't have many Costcos up in Ohio. We had more Sam's Clubs than anything. So when I when I came out there to California, <laughs> I was walking around that little shopping center that you have not far from your house. I was like, oh, a Costco. Oh, wait a minute. I heard they have good hot dogs. I've only had the Sam's Club hot dog. I don't think I've done the Costco dog. Is there a variance? I imagine they're very similar, but it's more than uh, what I want to talk about is actually not the hot dog itself, but the uh, the accessory station, I guess you could call it. <laughs> they have a thing like I, I had never seen. I, I, I'm not a sports guy. I'm, I now I've been to Dodger Stadium. I think maybe this is like, oh, yeah, everybody does. That. Stop, 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 stop. I got to know onion thing is that where we're going yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so fucking yeah they've got it's just this locked box it's a, it's a box with a padlock on it that i guess periodically they just come by and drop chopped onions in <laughs> you turn this little knob the and onion like crank and the, yeah you turn the onion crank and this little auger periodically just spits onions out of the hole uh, this was carefully designed as a means of making it so people don't take a fuck ton of onions the onions remain like trapped away like there's so much thought they don't there's dry so much out thought into it that dry i'm just onions? like but is that really a problem <laughs> It is, and I could not love the hot dog crank any more than I do. <laughs> I just remembered, guys, there's a package of hot dogs in my refrigerator that has been there for two and a half years. It's probably still oh, you're good. You're going to get a case of nylon cord out of that one. Oh, yeah. You're going to get the rip cord shits for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, like a dog that ate something it shouldn't have. So I want to get back to hot dog prep station because I had an, I had another question. So so clearly clearly <laughs> we we agree on the majesty but also confusingness of the fucking onion bin auger. But yes. like related to that, so they've got bin giant bins of of uh, hot dog uh, of, uh, of ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise in packages. Just like oh yeah, just grab a handful, take them with you. We don't care. How is it possible that onions cost so much more? That they need to be in this elaborate lockbox, bear-proof scenario. Be because they don't last forever. Yeah. Like you yeah, can, have you ever you had can, preserved yeah, onion? Yeah, preserved onion. Because you can get onion packets, and they're fucking terrible. Oh, that sounds awful. Yeah, it's really bad. Don't do it. That's why the onion auger exists. It's, it's like, it, it, it's like it, it, the onions, they revert into a former state 
uh, you get more like onion fetus coming out of it's those bad. packets. It's just it's it's, it's yeah. goopy onion me out. You know those food. little like cocktail onions that you get in a jar. Can I get I, some credit for that? I for no, sake. no, I'm not gonna recognize it. You put yeah, take an immersion blender to a can of cocktail onions. That's what's in the packets, and it's not good. I mean, yeah, part of the appeal of onions on a hot dog for me is is the large chunky the chunky texture. Yeah. If if it's like grits that you're spreading out on a hot dog, oh, onion flavored grits. Oh. That's basically what relish is. See, that's actually what I want. Like I I kind of want to just take a sushi chef and hold him hostage and describe what I want, but he would cry every step of the way making it cuz I want like a traditional like California roll, but I want it with chicken, and then I want you to dip that whole completed thing in tempura so, batter. And Array, I really it. should have taken you to a Mars so sushi you, place. They have some shit like that. They have one called the heart attack roll. That uh, the entire thing, the roll is made, and then it is tempura fried. The roll, entire roll, is tempura fried. It's I fucking delicious. See, that's that. what I basically want. I want a burrito, a delicious burrito, but just. Instead of a, a flour tortilla, it's you, just fried. You, you want crab and hot dogs and onions in your sushi roll. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I'll try anything. Oh. But they have to, the onions have to come from an <laughs> yes. otter. It's the only way. Just layered on top of the roll with some gravy to adhere everything. <laughs> well, I know what I'm getting so, you guys for your respective birthdays. I'm going to buy a fixin's <laughs> bar for you. So like, have you uh, the the onion augers that you've seen? Have yes. they all been manual? Yeah. And I do think they should be pedal operated, but they aren't. I feel like introducing <laughs> a push button to the onion auger would just—I don't know—I feel like it would cheapen the. No, whole I, I like—I want those like the toilets with the you know the. I don't have to touch this. Yeah, I want the pedal. Yeah, so you have like a, a motion activated, <laughs> like the paper towel. But what you have to like, <laughs> just wave your hand in front of it. I don't know why, but the idea of like, you know, like a bathroom foam soap dispenser where you just hold your hand up and it would spit just out onions. spit some chopped <laughs> onions into it is funnier than the Bakta tank of hot dog water to me. Like, so when I lived in Atlanta, um, uh, you know, me and Mia and, and Brian and Lindsay would frequently go to this place called Sweet Tomatoes. Um, I love that place. Oh, uh, yeah, I love that place. And. You know, I learned that roughly at the same time as I was going there, Meg was going with her family to the the version of that out here, soup plantation, right? Right. Which you know, I seen uh, when I went to sweet. Wait, to, when I went, to, hang on, whoa, Chris, hang whoa. on, Chris. When I went to the the sweet tomatoes, I always like all their branding and stuff, like listed the names of both places, and I never thought twice about it. And then so Meg and I were going down to Redondo Beach for this wedding, and we were like, hey, let's stop there and eat for uh, for lunch. We both love that place, and we haven't been able to go in a long time because there isn't one near us. So we stop in, and like as I sit down with my plate and stuff, I was like, I think I just now got why they don't call this place Soup Plantation in Atlanta. <laughs> I was literally <laughs> going to ask, is it a slavery motif in the restaurant? Not at all. It's the most chipper and upbeat place on the planet. Delicious, fresh. They're blueberry muffins yeah. to die for. Are they harvested by like oppressed people? Well, kind of. I would not. I would, the the wait staff. I would not want to be. I mean, this is true. Sweet tomatoes in the south too. Like it's that's a rough gig. Have I talked about the the uh, Mexican place everybody at work goes to for lunch? Maybe I don't know. They all love this place universally. All the software engineers, and they're always trying to get me to go. And I feel like it's a trap. It's a because cult. yeah. Probably. The place is called like all of their like their menu and their flyers and their website. Everything it's like. Mr. Taco, authentic Mexican cuisine. And like, if it was that authentic, it should be Senor Taco. I'm not falling for it, you motherfuckers. And that place will, will get you releasing onion packets into the bowl later. Onion birthing fluid. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to say it again. Onion meatic fluid. Chris, I can't believe you're, you're with the, the way you harsh on people combining words. You're about trying, to, trying to get the credit for omniotic, onion meatic fluid. There's a, there's a word for that, isn't there? Yeah. I, I love the things that I hate on for the very reasons that I hate them. That sounds emotionally exhausting. <laughs> sounds like an Eminem song. One an episode. Gotta get it in. It's my shtick. Infotainment system. <laughs> Thank you.
what is your company's position on loose lips? <laughs>